Hello everyone, and welcome to Art Lesson 2, Exploring Shadow. Uh, in this video, we are going to be looking at elements of light and shadow, and different ways to create believable form on a two-dimensional surface. Uh, so to begin with, I want to go over a couple of vocabulary terms just so we're on the same page as we talk about this stuff. Um, I'm going to act like I am going to draw a sphere here on this page. Um, so I'm going to just trace this bowl so I don't have to worry about, you know, making a perfect circle or anything. There's my beautiful sphere, which obviously right now is just a circle because it has no shape to it. Um, and we're going to pretend that it's light, uh, lit by a single light source right here. You know, there's a lamp shining down on our beautiful sphere in front of us. Um, so this light is going to come down and hit this sphere. And it is going to light this whole section of this ball. And so um, this section we will call the light sex section. So here's where the actual light is hitting the sphere and then this whole section underneath will be the shadow. No actual light is hitting this. Everything down here is going to be darker than all of this. Um, so in the section of light, there's something called a highlight, and this is the brightest spot on the whole object. No other part of this ball is going to be as bright as the highlight. Um, and sometimes in a shape there's, there isn't like a super obvious highlight if the light source is a little bit more indirect. Um, or if the material is strange of the object you're drawing, the highlight will be harder to see. Um, like on a matte surface, you can't see a highlight as strongly as like as a metallic or shiny surface and the highlight is really, really bright. So if the light were coming from here, the highlight would probably be like right there. So, um, the, the area underneath the highlight, like around here, is sometimes called a midtone. Um, some people differentiate that from just like the light area. This is kind of the gradient that uh, leads into the core shadow and the shadow area. So, the core shadow is kind of this area. This... I can't spell and talk at the same time. Shadow. Um, this is going to be the darkest part on the actual object. Uh, it is as the shape is turning away from the light and before it gets into any reflected light you have this really nice uh, deep dark shadow right there. Um, and then beneath the core shadow it usually lightens up a little bit in reflected light. Um, so the reflected light can change a lot depending on your surroundings. Uh, if your object is on a really light surface, the light will bounce off and, and create a brighter reflected light. Uh, and if your surface is a lot darker, there won't be as much reflected light. So for example, yeah, I have this egg here, um, and if I take my hand away, the lighting is like so weird with the camera. But if I take my light away, uh, my hand away, you can see the light area. You can see the shadow area. Um, the light's not super like intense in here, so the core shadow's there. It's much fainter. Let's see, I try to put like my hand on it, <laughs> see if that would make it darker. But if I bring up this page, you can see that reflected light got a lot brighter. It's darker and then way brighter because more light's being reflected back into that shadow side. But if I get a dark object, all that light goes away and it gets darker. And like right up next to it gets really dark because it's all reflecting off of it. 
Um, so your surroundings can really affect that reflected light on an object. Um, then, uh, last but not least, we have the cast shadow, um, which is, I think, what most people think of when they hear the word shadow. <laughs> this is the actual shadow that is cast by the object, <laughs> thus cast shadow. And this is uh, usually as dark or even darker sometimes than the core shadow. The core shadow is the darkest shadow on the actual object, uh, and then the cast shadow is sometimes darker. So, um, this, the light source will really affect the cast shadow uh, a lot. As you can see, the room I'm in right now, um, well, actually right now it's not too bad. There's really like one main cast shadow. And but you can also see kind of some different shadows going on. Like there's a few different light sources in this room. So the shadows are a little strange. That's why usually when you want to get a picture reference or a draw from something you want like one good source of light unless you want to deal with a bunch of wonky shadows then yeah you know, that's that's more than okay if that's what you want to do um so anyway these are the basic elements of light anywhere uh we can see this um in the egg we can see all how many of there are uh seven of these in the egg here, you can see the two <laughs> different cast shadows. Um, we can see it just in my hand. Again, the light is subtler, so it's not as bright, but we have our core shadow here. We have a couple of different highlights right there. Um, we're getting a little bit of reflected light through here. You can see it in everything, and they are totally integral in making drawings really look realistic and like they're rising from the page. Now we can go into our first exercise. I'll be showing you a few methods that I use for shading uh, and to keep it simple I'll just continue to be drawing and shading a sphere. Um, I've pulled up a reference on my computer in front of me that I'll be working off of and if you want to follow along with the exercise you can find loads of resources if you just look up sphere art references online. So to start I'm going to trace this bowl again so I don't have to worry about that. Um, this first method of shading is going to be called an additive process. So with a pencil, I will be putting down or adding all of the darks. I'm going to be starting from white to all the values that I want. Um, I'm going to be using a charcoal pencil uh, today because I personally prefer to draw with charcoal. I really like how dark it can get and how rich the darks are. Um, and if you get really dark, it doesn't turn glossy like graphite pencils do, but you are more than welcome to use uh, whatever tool you prefer or whatever you have on hand. Um, so really quick, I'm going to add some lines to show where my core shadow is. And after that, I'm going to um, darken up my whole shadow area. I know none of the actual light is hitting this whole section, so this whole section needs to be darker. Um, then I'm going to go over this core shadow area and darken it up a little bit more. And I'm not too concerned with staying in the lines. I'm going to be smudging this whole thing all up, so... It's, it's going to get a little messy anyways. And I've darkened up that core shadow area. And now I'm going to smudge it all up. Um, I'm just using a, a paper towel. 
You can use tissue, paper towel, a piece of fabric, really anything that works for you. I always just grab whatever I have on hand closest. Um, so the paper you use will have an effect on how this works. Right now I'm just using like printer paper. Um, so this will not be as nice and smooth as, you know, some nice art paper um, or sketchbook paper or anything. But you can still you can still make cheaper paper work. It's just you have to you have to fight it a little bit more. So, um, and also keep in mind as I work, this is totally just my process. Feel free to change up anything so it works for you. Uh, if this is just not the way you think, that is totally fine. Um, experiment and really figure out uh, how you like to shade. Um, so. I've now smudged it all over and I've smudged into the light area because I do want to build up that mid-tone that we're going to need in order to make that highlight pop. Um, but after this, I'm going to continue to build up my values, go over them and over them and then smudge them down and then build them up some more um, and just kind of do this process, you know, however many times it takes until I feel like I'm, I'm creating an actual believable uh, 3D shape on this paper. So at the uh, end of the time lapse there, you probably saw me using an eraser to kind of clean up some of the lines and stuff. Um, I love kneaded erasers. This is just a little teeny tiny piece of one. They're usually a bit bigger. Um, not only are they very fun to play with, but they are very handy to use for drawing as well. Um, if you don't have one, I would highly suggest getting one. They're great. You can certainly just use regular erasers, but a kneaded eraser is great uh, to be able to kind of sculpt it into the shape you want, like that edge and get a nice crisp edge. And also you can lift out um, charcoal or graphite, whatever you're drawing with, you can lift it out um, a little bit more gradually than you can uh, a harder eraser. Um, but anyway, this is the mostly finished piece and you know, it is certainly rough around the edges and still kind of messy, but it's a quick sketch. So um, if yours is pretty messy too, you know, totally don't worry about it. This is just practice. Nobody else has to see these. Like this is just trying to figure out value. So um, we're not, you know, doing nice finished pieces. We're just practicing. So it's fine if it's messy, um, but you can probably see one big value I am totally missing on this is a highlight. And so with this kneaded eraser, I'll just come in to where my highlight is just start to lift that out. <laughs> Keep like jiggling the camera a little bit as I try to do this. Sorry about that. And this, I've made the light section a little darker than I want, so I'm kind of lifting out more than I would just for a highlight. And I'll smudge that all together. On nicer paper, it's it's much easier to get a smoother finish. Um, this printer paper kind of makes it a little blotchy, but that's okay. And there we have it, you know, a pretty quick sketch of a sphere, but hopefully you get the idea. So this second method of shading is going to be somewhat similar to the first one, but instead of using an additive process where we start with white uh, and we put down all the darks, this is going to be a subtractive process. So first we're going to need to tone our paper. Um, so you can buy toned paper. It's, it's just colored paper. Um, you can get sketchbooks that are like brown or gray, or you of course can buy any color of paper, uh, but it is pretty easy to tone your own. Um, we're going to be using, <laughs> you see my fingers are already messy just from 
finding this and picking it up. But we're gonna use a stick of charcoal and just put it down. This will definitely get messy. I mean, you can see all this dust that like comes off that gets everywhere. So prepare to get a little messy, but it's fun. Um, then we're gonna smudge it all together. Now we have our toned surface. Uh, pictures that you draw from toned surfaces uh, generally, of course, come out darker. Um, they're more moody looking, which is great if that is the kind of aesthetic that you're into. Um, I personally really love working from toned stuff. I do like that kind of darker, deeper shade that you get. Um, so we're going to be doing another sphere, outline it, put in some lines to show where our core shadow is. I can put in some lines. I didn't do this last time until later, but I can show where the cast shadow is going to be. And then this one will be much the same, you know, building up your darks. Um, you don't have to build up your darks as much because most of them are already there. The mid-tone's already there. Usually working from a toned surface is quicker because you don't have to build up quite as much value because um, so much of that work's already been done. But you do have to go in, and depending on how dark your toned surface is, some um, if you're buying your own paper or shading it, you can get a much lighter tone that is, you know, barely off of the highlight, or you can get an almost black <laughs> paper, or you could get black paper where you have to lighten up everything. So this one is a bit more on the dark side, so I will have to go in with my kneaded eraser and start lifting out my lights. Oh, sorry that my camera keeps shaking when I draw. So I'll work on building up my lights by lifting out with an eraser and then building up my dark darks uh, with the shadow areas. All right, so here's what I've got after working on it for a little bit. Um, as you can see, putting these next to each other, they're certainly pretty different. Like I said, this one is just by its nature much, much darker, um, moodier, but I, I definitely like this process and it's much quicker. Um, it's probably kind of hard to tell with the time lapse, but this took much less time than this one. And it's a little bit more forgiving since you already kind of have things all smudged around. Um, you can, you can get a smoother, more polished look, um, in this one, I don't know how well you can see in the video, you can still see the marks that I made with my pencil, um, so if you're trying to get something that totally doesn't look like it was made by a pencil, like something totally polished, uh, it is just a little bit more difficult to do, uh, just on a white piece of paper. You really, really have to work to hide those pencil marks. Um, but in this one, obviously I used my eraser a lot to go in and lift out some of the darks. Uh, if you're working on a piece of colored paper, you obviously can't erase out that. So uh, they do make white charcoal pencils uh, that work and look fantastic on toned paper. Um, for myself, I never use a white charcoal pencil if I'm working on something that I've covered in charcoal because if you mix the white and the dark charcoal, 
it just, probably can't see very well, it just kind of makes it a little muddy. Um, I just, I don't love the way it looks. Uh, that is probably more of a personal preference thing. Um, so if I am working on a toned paper, a colored piece of paper, I won't ever really let the dark charcoal and the white charcoal mix at all because they do get kind of just muddy, um, not as clean and crisp. And obviously this one's a little bit more of a mess, but you know, having your hands covered in charcoal really makes you feel like an artist. All right, so there are some of the basics of light and form. Even though we just looked at spheres today, these are elements that can be used in just about everything that you draw. So I really hope that some of this was helpful and as always, thank you so much for watching.